So another interesting move by the Denver Broncos, you know, I already talked about, I made a video on Jamar Johnson. He's a player that I like a lot and was surprised he fell, even though it wasn't a position of need. I don't hate that move. And this is kind of a similar situation with Seth Williams. I actually had him. He made my top 10 wide receiver list. He was number 10, but he made the list. So to see him fall this far was a bit of a surprise to me. I did still have him as a day three selection, so I wasn't like super high on him, but I thought he could go in the third round. So him, having him fall all the way to the late sixth round feels like kind of a steal and feels like they've got a, you know, a potentially talented wide receiver. Now, you know, they don't necessarily need him. They have like I, KJ Hamler's interesting. We'll see what he can do. Uh, he's someone who's interesting though. Obviously, Jerry Judy, I like a lot of what I saw last year. Tim Patrick took a big step up. And of course you have Cortland Sutton, but I guess the thought is like, hey, uh, you know, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, you'd like to see KJ Hamler be able to step up. You'd like maybe even Deshaun Hamilton, but if neither one of those guys can, you could have Seth Williams being that wide receiver for, and again, with a six round pick, these are basically lottery picks anyway. So why not take the best guy with the highest potential? Cause he is someone who I could see being like a starter level wide receiver. And so getting him in the sixth round, it's a good value pick. And so, yeah, let's just jump into the film study and talk about what I like about him. So let's start things off with this one. I think this one will be a good way of showing kind of just what Seth Williams is as a player. So it's going to be a man coverage play, and the player who's going up against him is in press. Seth Williams is 6'3", 212 pounds. So despite his, you know, his 40-yard dash was above a 4'5", at the pro day, which to me says it might be above 4'6", which is not great. Uh, so that's a bit concerning. But you know what? There still is ways to get open. And one of the real ways he's able to get open is just by winning at the line. That's a big thing that he's good at. So watch what he's going to do here. Watch how right when this play starts, you notice how the defensive back is kind of trying to get his left arm onto Williams' sort of right side of his body right there, trying to push right there. But Williams is just a hard guy to win in this situation with. He's just hard to win by using your hands at the line. And honestly, I would kind of advice for anybody if you are covering Williams don't even try this because he he just has great hands at the line and watch him push off and then you know he does have pretty good acceleration though so and not to mention that little hurdle right there he's athletic as well so he almost reminds me of like it's maybe like a less version a worser version of a Mike Evans type that's kind of how I would probably describe Williams I think that play did a pretty good job of, of showing exactly what I mean Another thing is something like this. I think that this is another way that he can just, he can win. And that's kind of what I'm looking for is how do you win? What do you do well? And how good are you at that? And, you know, while there might be some issues with Williams, while he might not be the fastest player, the reality is when he has to win, he can win. And he when, when he figures out how to win, he can do it consistently. So here's how it works. It's going to be, you know, man coverage. You see the route that he's running. It's going to be a go route towards the sideline. It is a cover two play, so there is a safety deep, so probably won't get a touchdown on this play, but, you know, uh, running the go route, that's the, the key point with a defensive back covering him. And also, you can look down and just, you know, look at the scoreboard, see what the situation is. A minute and 21 seconds, Auburn is actually down a point right here, so could use a field goal, just, you know, letting you know it's a high-pressure situation. And watch what Williams is going to do. Right when this play starts, he's going to have enough speed to get somewhat by the defensive back on this play. Again, the speed that it takes to beat a college defensive back, not quite the same as the speed it takes to beat an NFL defensive back, but you know what? Still doing a pretty good job. However, what's going to be impressive is that really, I mean, what you can do as a quarterback is you can just sort of throw it high. You have a 6'3 receiver. That's an advantage. Use that advantage by sort of throwing it high. That makes sense. That's what he does. And watch how Williams makes this grab. And actually, you know, the safety made a poor move. So Williams ended up getting all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. So really incredible play by Seth Williams, given the situation and just kind of goes to show that just having height is a skill to some degree. And that's another thing that he brings to the table. Like, I think this play is a great example of showing what he can do. So I, I watched this a few times. I was trying to figure out exactly what coverage it is. I think it's cover three. I'm not exactly sure. But either way, it doesn't matter too much because he's just running a deep route. And really what's going to be interesting is what's going to happen. Watch how right when this play starts. So, you know, you wait for it to develop a little bit. The quarterback's just going to, you know, throw it up and send a prayer. You see, this is basically as pure of a 50-50 ball as you're going to get. Quarterback just says, you know, 500 and throws it up uh, to see what happens. You have a receiver who's just bigger and you're going to see if he can make the play. And Williams does in fact come down with it. That's a big catch. And again, 
Uh, I don't know exactly how well that kind of thing translates to the NFL because when you're playing against guys who can contest balls better, that could be a bit of an issue. But at the same time, it's at least a nice trait to have, and there's some real intrigue there, I think. And if that's something you really value, then it absolutely makes sense because he has those qualities very well. I also want to show this play. This is a good example of showing, again, a lot of what he is bringing to the table, which is his physicality. It is his size. If you can get him open, and I think that that's kind of something that's interesting, is you can kind of scheme him open a little bit. I think he'll be a really good short yardage player. Like, when you need three yards, put him on the line. You can't really play press, but then he can just sort of make one quick move. You throw it, you know, high or low, he can make the grab, and then just fall forward and pick up the first down. So there's real value in that. Uh, I also think that if you can scheme him open, well, now you can kind of get more yards as he can fall forward when he's in open space. Like a play like this, for example, it's going to be a play action, and you see the route that he's running. So you get players to move in, uh, you throw it over the top, and hope that, uh, you know, hope that the defensive player doesn't make the read in time for Williams to get open. And watch, as you see, right when this play starts, Williams is wide open, makes the grab. So at this point, you know, and, and I should be clear, this isn't going to be like some super highlight real level play or anything, but it's going to be a pretty good play where it should be a pretty quick tackle. You would think all things equal, but watch how he just, you know, puts that stiff arm out and just runs forward and picks up way more yards. He just has that physicality, which again, it's not like a lot of guys have that. It's hard to teach size. It's hard to teach toughness. It's hard to teach physicality he has all of those things and so I think that's something that he is bringing to the table and there's just not a lot of other guys who have that kind of stuff there's a couple you know like I think Jamar Jace has that kind of stuff but you know you would have probably uh you would probably had to spend a higher draft pick to get Jamar Chase I'm assuming uh that's typically what would have been the case personally I think I do think part of me is a tad worried about some of this stuff with Williams just because if you uh, you know look at it a lot of times this stuff can not always translate to the NFL. Typically, route running, speed, that stuff does matter in the NFL. But another thing that matters is technique and, you know, hands at the line, that does matter. So I'm not sure if I would sit here and say I think Seth Williams is going to be a true number one receiver. I don't think too many people would say that. Whereas, you know, I think other guys, uh, you know, who go sort of later, who aren't those, you know, those top guys, Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddell, Jamar Chase, uh, a lot of the other guys, there's still some maybe higher ceilings than Williams, but I think Williams is kind of, what's nice about him is it seems like he has a high floor. So yeah, that's at least what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this move, on this draft pick, and on this player? Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.